everybody. Welcome to this episode of Thinking Outside the Long Box. We're doing another interview episode. I'm Gabe Yannis. And of course, today I'm going to be talking to David Sheftel. He is going to be in the new Nick Cage bonkers horror movie, Willie's Wonderland. <laughs> David, how are you doing today, man? I'm great, Gabe. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. So, you know, th the first thing you, you really have to ask is, you know, this is one of Nick Cage's ventures that he's kind of been churning out over the last couple of years with Mandy and Color Out of Space and now this one you know what was your excitement level when you saw kind of like what kind of movie it was and who it was starring and that you were going to get to participate in it <laughs> for sure so uh, when I got to audition for it you know Grant Kramer who's the producer he really championed me for the role of Deputy Sheriff Evan Olsen and it was just sort of another level to realize oh my gosh I'm going to be in a movie with Nick Cage because growing up I'm such a fan of his growing up I'm a fan of his now and getting to work with him it's surreal. You know, you sort of pinch yourself while you're on set and he couldn't be a cooler guy. He couldn't be a nicer guy. He couldn't be a more collaborative actor to work with. So it was just an awesome, awesome experience from start to finish. So, you know, you, you mentioned your character in the movie. Tell us a little bit about like who you play and like kind of what his role is in the film. <laughs> Sure. So I play, as I said, Deputy Sheriff Evan Olson, and uh, I'm brought in for the evening uh, by the Sheriff of Hayesville, played remarkably by Beth Grant, who she and I, we just had wonderful chemistry and became really good friends on and off set, and we've hung out since. And she, so her character brings me in for the evening as backup, hopefully for what we think is going to be just a, a quiet night, and then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> so... So the trailer for this movie, like, I haven't had the opportunity to watch it yet. Like, I'm kind of beating myself up because I thought it came out, like, next Friday. And so yep. I didn't watch it this weekend like a doofus. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, so the trailer for this movie, you know, it, it kind of articulates that Nicolas Cage is in this, uh, like, a Chuck E. Cheese slash Five Nights at Freddy's, like, horror show. For sure. And then you as the police are having to also, like, confront, like, this craziness. Like, you know... Working on a set like that, there has to be tons of like practical effects and just kind of weird, crazy things going on. What was some of the, what are some of the most fun things that you saw like as effects in the movie? Well, so uh, it, it is, I think, 95 to 98 percent all practical effects. So nice. all the animatronics, <laughs> there are, are heavy real costumes. People are inside those. They're working them. There's puppetry involved. All the blood and gore is actual makeup that is applied. You know, I've had, I had hours of makeup that I was in to make sure it looked real, it looked authentic. And yeah, it was so much fun. And everybody is just trying to work on it and figure it out together. So um, I, I don't want to spoil anything uh, for the movie, but I have a couple of scenes with some of the animatronics, specifically a Spanish turtle named Tito. And uh, he and I had to definitely work together uh, based on his physicality and how he could move uh, to make things work. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's incredible. So, you know, you talk about your, your chemistry with, with the, the actor that played the sheriff. Yep. You know, what were, what were some of the other, like, great, like, people to work with? You know, some of the other actors and who, who were so fun to work with? Because it looks like you guys were having a blast. If, you know, just from the small amount I've seen of it, it looks incredibly fun. <laughs> And it was like from the moment I got on set, uh, they had to drag me off because I was having so much fun. And we all just, we sort of became like a little family. You know how they say you, you become a, a little family while you're there. And we really did. And we became friends on and off set. So, you know, I had a, a long scene with Emily Tosta, the, the young female lead in this movie who's fantastic and you know she and I we were in a car for hours and hours and in the cold and shooting and we we're just you know keeping each other cracking each other up you know trying to try to laugh between scenes and then be very very serious and and do our things and you know we went out to dinner we hung out we we chatted a group of us part crew part uh part of the group of actors we all went out this is all before the pandemic and right <laughs> went dancing, had fun. So it was, it was a blast. So, uh, you know, my three big scenes in, and team partners were with Nicolas Cage, Beth Grant, and Emily Tosa. And I, I can't say enough wonderful, wonderful things about all three of them. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've, you've done some voice work for like Family Guy and American Dad and also for uh, um, 
Days Gone, yep. which is a, a really fun game. I played the crap out of it. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, how does like how does voice work differentiate from like acting because you've done both you know you have this background in theater and stuff like what's it like to you know kind of use different skills and utilize different skills for different jobs for sure you know first of all i'll say you know i get this i get asked this a lot what's the big sort of differences how do you fluctuate between on camera and voiceover and i have to say i mean it's all acting at the end of the day it's all acting so you have to know your intentions you have to know your thoughts you have to know what your character wants whether you're on camera or off camera the biggest difference is i can sort of play a, a million different things based on my voice or how i fluctuate my voice or the how i think the character should sound and i can walk in sort of wearing anything which is always <laughs> always a delight but um you know it's funny it, also on film in film and TV, it seems like the more subtle you are, the more engaging you are on camera. Sometimes to get the expression while doing voiceover, you're waving your arm, things that you would never do on camera. You're sort of going nuts and expelling a lot, a lot of energy in the booth. And you just sort of have to know your relationship to the microphone as well. So the microphone's gonna pick up everything that you do. So if you're like in Days Gone, there's a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, a lot of death. So if you're yelling right into that microphone, you're gonna blow out the player's eardrums where you, have, <laughs> right. you, know, you gotta back off at certain times. That's interesting. Like it, yeah. it's interesting that you feel physically more emotive because you don't have the ability to convey with like your face and your body. That's that's pretty cool actually it's really cool. Yeah, sometimes you know especially for family guy where you know you're in a crowd and there's a chicken fight going on with peter and the, <laughs> and the giant chicken you're yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and you know you're you're sweating by the end of it because you go whoo that was a session all right do it again <laughs> so yeah you're like no i'm tired now. <laughs> you didn't get it on take one all right <laughs> so. so so you know in going back to Willie's Wonderland, you know, yeah. Nick, Nicolas Cage is an incredibly over the top actor. You know, I, I we just finished talking on the show about history of swear words and how yeah. hilarious that was. And, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Mandy and of, of Color Out of Space. Yeah, me too. You know, so, so coming from like a background in like theater and like going to school for it, which I know he did as well, like, yeah. what is it like working? with somebody that's just so big he seems like so big all the time like how do you kind of work with that i don't know if he's so big all the time but he makes big choices and i think that's the difference that you know some actor you know we, we hear make a big choice it may be the wrong choice especially like in an audition you may make the wrong choice but make a choice because a lot of people are making the same choices on things so i think he is just trying a lot a lot of different things and you'll see in this movie he has a lot a lot of subtlety i don't want to give it away but i wouldn't say he has much dialogue in this film mm -hmm. so he is making some amazing choices and everything is through the eyes and how he's how he's emoting is very very specific so i'd say he's a very specific actor in what he chooses to do and i know while i was on set i would just watch him and go "Ooh, i've got to steal that you know they say steal nice. from the great and i definitely was watching nick and beth and even emily and going i gotta steal that that's awesome like it's cool to see like you know every everybody's always in this constant learning process as they're right. creating art like no matter what they're doing and you know we've talked to a lot of actors directors writers and they always are talking about how they feed off of each other like what do you think the like how important do you think it is to like really click with like a group like you say as a family when you're creating like a movie or a play or a show I think it's huge. And like you said, you know, I came from a theater background. I went to Pepperdine for and studied theater. I did 11 shows in the four years I was there. I went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and you're working, you know, we became a tight knit group, but you have new actors coming in who are freshmen every year. And, uh, you know, the seniors go out. So you're making new connections with people. You're in different casts with people, different directors every year, and you have to learn to work with each other. And yeah, that chemistry that you're talking about, and especially like on Willie's Wonderland, you, it, it really, really helps when you're working together and you're seeing, oh, that's the choice that they made. It does feed off of what you're doing as well. Because when you're auditioning for the role, you have your sides, you, you read the other part, but you don't really hear it. Everything is sort of one-sided. You're doing, this is the choice that I've made. This is what I've brought to the table. And then when you get there, 
oh, this is what the other person has brought. That's a different sort of energy or way that they play it. And the way that they play it makes me come up with a new idea. So yeah, that playing off of each other. Again, Beth Grant and I were in a, in a police car, sheriff's car for, you know, weeks and we were playing <laughs> off of each other. And, uh, you know, I, I had a great acting teacher who told me when you're doing takes on camera, don't do, it's not the same take every time. It's like a, it's like a menu. Okay. I'm going to do this one on this one. I'm going to change it up and do this and that. And, you know, I use a lot of, what are the different thoughts that this character is having in that moment? That's cool. Yeah. You know, when, you know, you, you talk about being, you know, being uh, with the group, you know, before COVID mm -hmm. and having fun and all that sort of thing, you know, and obviously like going through this last year has just been like chaotic for a lot of actors and directors sure. and writers. How do you think like, how do you think that is going to affect like, the reception of the movie because like I, no matter what I'm gonna sit and watch horror movies all day every day that's kind of my thing but I have friends that are just like kind of casual fans of of horror films and suspense and stuff they're like I just don't want to watch anything scary because right. everything's been so weird already like how do you think that kind of plays into this well, you know, I do find that people are, are starved for entertainment while they're being yeah. watched and they can't go out a lot so I think you know it is a good time to watch all the stuff you wanted to see or all the stuff that's coming out. You're going, oh, you know, maybe I wouldn't have seen that before, but now I want to watch it. And the great thing about Willy's Wonderland is, yes, it's a horror movie, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's definitely not a pandemic style movie where it's about <laughs> a pandemic. You know, I've seen a lot of films come out that are about a pandemic and I can see why people go, oh, I don't know if I want to watch that right now. But Willy's is just such a fun roller coaster ride of something crazy like you said a haunted animatronic Chuck E. Cheese and Nicolas Cage just go into town on them so whether you're a horror film you know fan or just a movie fan I think it's worth checking out because you're gonna have a lot of fun with it as mu many scares as there are in it there's a lot of laughs in it too that's awesome yeah. so you know where do you where do you like kind of go from here like you know a lot of guys their schedule you know got shut down or they're just starting up like what kind of stuff are you you know working on or anticipating working on in the near future well i've been very lucky because during this whole time i've been working on this uh voiceover show uh it's called uh it's on facebook watch it's called rival peak with will wheaton and uh <laughs> basically it's a game that you can play on facebook that's sort of in the style of the sims and then it's kind of a show based kind of like a lost meat survivor and we're, we're all these different types of characters. I play this Australian sort of larrikin type named Christopher Sabun, and Sabun is his spiritual name, which he only found out later once he got it means soap. And basically <laughs> we're all competing for $10 million to climb up this mountain called Rival Peak, but all this strange, crazy stuff happens on the mountain. And then Will Wheaton, he actually uh, hosts the after show called Rival Speak. So our characters interact with a live Will Wheaton every week and we're about I think nine weeks into the 12 week run uh my character Sabun is one of the final four contestants so nice. people can go to Facebook watch right now play and vote for Sabun and then watch the after show and see what happens and see who gets voted off and who wins so just so I'm 100 percent clear yep. on what's going on yes. so the game people are voting for the animated characters and if Correct. they win they go to like the next episode is that kind of what's happening you 100 percent. so every okay. week, will wheaton's uh will wheaton's uh rivals speak the after show we find out who gets kicked off for the week so the more you play as the characters that you like hopefully it's my character the more points <laughs> they get so the one with the lowest points by the end of the week their character gets kicked off the show but they may or may not come back in a different way. So, cause there's a lot of weird stuff happening on Rival <laughs> Peak. So yeah, you get to play the game, you get to watch the show, you get to watch the after show. So it's very interactive and it's a lot of fun and people seem to be really responding to it, which is cool. That's awesome. You know, during the pandemic, I've seen a lot of like really big games come out, you know, large, large open world kind of games. And then a lot of like interactive stuff like this. Do you think like the, that kind of attention or uh, star for entertainment is, is kind of feeding kind of new sorts of like gaming slash media combinations like that? For sure. I think, you know, like you said, people are wanting more and more entertainment and stuff to keep them occupied. And because I guess we can't really go out at night. Everybody wants to be safe. Everybody's working together on this. So, yeah.
video games, entertainment. And like I said, stuff that maybe you wouldn't have played or you wouldn't have seen before. Now it's like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. And I think people are discovering a lot of great independent stuff that they wouldn't have before. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. Like, you know, I, I ended up subscribing to like Shutter and like Criterion Channel, which I never would have done before just because, you know, I had so much other stuff going on in my life and I've watched so much amazing, crazy stuff that I never would have seen because I have so much spare time now. Right. Like, I can't start in sports. Nobody goes anywhere. So but there's great stuff on that. Right. And you sort yeah. of go, oh, my gosh, I would have never known. Oh, like, sorry, this is this is totally off topic, but I, I watched this movie. It's like a short film in the Afrofuturist like collection on Criterion. Right. It's literally just like samurais with like magic wind swords fighting each other for 20 minutes. It's that sounds awesome. It's the best. Like, <laughs> That's so cool. That's right so, up my alley. I, I might have to. What's it called? It, uh, it's called, oh, man. Uh, I didn't mean to put that in a lot. I think it's called Hakai Yo Suda, I think. Cool. I'll have to I'll I'll send it to a I'll send the name of it to AJ to forward to you. Perfect. But I definitely it. butchered it because it's like a Japanese name and right. I'm not great with saying other people's words. <laughs> so <laughs> that sounds super cool. It was. It's the whole playlist has been things that I've never heard of that have been incredible. So awesome. So, you know, I guess as we kind of wrap up uh, the interview, you know, how can people find you, keep track of, you know, what you're doing on Willie's Wonderland and, and Rival Peaks and like, you know, just keep up with all of that stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty big on social media. I, I check it every day. I post every day if I can. So uh, I'm on uh, Instagram at David Sheftel. That's D-A-V-I-D-S-H-E-F-T-E-L-L. Uh, same on Twitter, D Sheftel on Facebook. You can also go to my website, so I keep uh, everything pretty up to date. I'm also uh, I'm a, a member of the uh, Writers Guild of America, and I just joined as their new host of their podcast. It's called Third and Fairfax, and we interview uh, different showrunners and writers. And uh, my first interview is up with uh, Judd Apatow, wherever nice. you get podcasts. So I interview him about his new film with Pete Davidson called The King of Staten Island. And we just go through his process for writing, how he got started, when he does TV shows, how he sets up a writer's room. And we just delve into the process of writing and uh, how, he, how he does it. And I, I think it's really, really interesting. And Judd is really, really open. It was a great interview to do. So. Nice. That's, that sounds right up my alley. That sounds really cool, yeah. man. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a big backlog of uh, hosts talking to a lot, a lot of different writers so and i've got some more coming up so i can't wait to do that so i hope people will will follow and listen to that as well awesome well david thank you so much for being on the show today again i feel like a dope for not having seen this movie already because i i was like so stoked for it and i was like what do you mean it came out last friday <laughs> no worries yep, it's out now so i hope if you haven't seen it please go watch it on video on demand and in select theaters yeah i will be doing that probably later today <laughs> thank you david i appreciate it man of course. Really quick.